beautiful this morning. Well, it's coming along. You know, when we moved to this hillside in Northern Marin, I was determined to have year-round color. But I also wanted to have a garden of mostly native plants. Native plants understand our climate, most need less water than non-native species, and survive our drought years. And they provide a habitat for beneficial birds, butterflies, and insects. It seemed to me one way I could help our native wildlife survive the extremes of climate change. It makes total sense to use the plants that evolved here in California. And there are so many to choose from. In fact, I know that we can recommend colorful native plants for every season. Let's start with spring. I don't know anyone who doesn't like ceanothus. Some people call them California lilac. It's interesting. There are 41 species in California, and they are site-specific, like that one. Ceanothus come in many shapes and sizes and can handle full sun or part shade. Uh, some stay only a foot tall but spread six to eight feet wide. Others grow as much as 20 feet tall, and there's everything in between. They might ramble as they please, drape over a wall, uh, become a hedge, or be trained into a tree. Most ceanothus are evergreen, but the thing that makes them stand apart is that most have striking blue blossoms from late winter to early spring, and that is rare in nature. That helps make ceanothus one of the most satisfying native plants for home gardeners. Another native for home gardeners is clematis. Now, most people don't know that there are three native clematis, and all have large white flowers like these. Uh, depending on the variety, the vines can grow 15 to 30 feet, uh, bloom in late winter through spring or even into summer. Uh, I have two. One grows on the stairway here uh, and the other grows on a trellis uh, over there and uh, blooms a little bit later than this. I'm going to add three more suggestions to our list for spring. Verbena lilicina de la Mina, Lupin, and seaside daisies. The verbena is a perennial that can grow to a height of a picnic table and almost as wide. It has dark purple blossoms with lavender streaks. Lupin is usually blue, but it also comes in pink, lavender, and yellow, and it can be tiny or a shoulder-high shrub. Some are annuals and some are perennials. They really add fragrance to the garden. The seaside daisies are native to the coastal beaches and dunes, but do well in our gardens as well. They're small, about one foot tall and two feet wide, and they have lavender flowers with yellow centers that bloom from winter well into July. Okay, now let's talk about two native plants known especially for summer flowers. Penstemon and salvia. There are actually over a hundred different types of penstemons native in California. Some are tall, others are small, but whatever size, they have clusters of tubular flowers in red, lavender, or blue. Salvia or sage have red, lavender, blue, or white flowers on plants that mostly have scented leaves. They're evergreen and can grow three feet tall, some like the sun, so others like the shade. So there's a sage for everyone. I have three summer favorites to add to the list. The California sand aster, buckwheat, and these beautiful clarkia. I added California sand asters for their beautiful lavender-tipped, silver, daisy-like flowers and evergreen leaves. Buckwheat's there, not only because it attracts pollinators, but gardeners can choose white, pink, yellow, or red flowered varieties. The buckwheats grow low or evergreen, and they can spread to up to three feet wide. Clarkia is another plant with lots of varieties. It's usually an annual, and it might grow as tall as waist high. The flowers are poppy-like, but in shades of lavender, pink, and red. 
They typically start blooming in late spring and finish before fall. For fall, I have one favorite, the Rogers Red Grapevine on the fence here. I love it. It can be fast growing and vigorous. My vine is 30 feet or more long and the pollinators were all over the flowers in the spring. I don't know how the grapes taste. The birds get to them before I can. But the best thing is the autumn leaves. I can't wait for the leaves to turn deep red in the fall. Bonnie, what do you like for fall? I like seeing the California fuchsias in the fall and the hummingbirds love it. It's perennial, low growing, it has red flowers that will start at the end of summer and continue through fall when other flowers have stopped blooming. It spreads by rhizomes and it can self-seed, so it can occupy a really wide area, but I usually cut it back after it flowers. Okay, let's do winter now. I love my manzanita. Um, you know, there are a hundred different kinds of manzanita in the wild, in different sizes from ground cover to 20 feet high. In the garden, manzanita do best in hillsides or other places with good drainage. One of the wonderful things about native plants is that many give us color in the winter when few other plants are blooming. I have three to add to our winter list, Ribes, Garia, and Toyon. The evergreen toyon is typically an eight-foot shrub that flowers in the spring, but around Christmas it produces bright red berries like a holly tree. In fact, some people in Southern California mistook toyon on the hillsides for holly trees, so they named their town Hollywood. Toyon can tolerate more summer water than some native plants, sun or part shade, and many types of soil. It's really a good addition to an existing non-native garden. The ribes varieties can be low growing, fan out into a small shrub, or grow to 13 feet tall. Some drop their green leaves in summer, but from winter to springs, they give hummingbirds cascades of small pink and sometimes yellow flowers. And some ribes have tiny yellow currants that turn black when they're ripe. The thorny ribes produce gooseberries. One more winter plant would be the evergreen garia. It is a knockout. It can grow 16 feet tall by 10 feet wide, and it has long, creamy silk tassels. So there we have it, a mostly native plant garden with color for all four seasons. And the blooming time of these plants will depend upon rain and other conditions, which can produce some interesting overlap. That's something that I always look forward to. As master gardeners, we talk a lot about the need to design earth-friendly gardens that help us by saving water and help the natural environment by providing habitats. I can't imagine anything more earth-friendly than growing California native plants. For more information, visit the UC Marin Master Gardener website and happy, happy planting! planting.